All right, let's see. Uh, Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up is a, is a movie on Netflix. I think it's doing quite well. It's, it's supposedly a comedy, a uh, satire. Here's the story. Um, now, if you're going to watch it, they're going to be I'm, 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 they're going to be lots of spoilers. I'm not going to recommend the movie. While I think the bits that are funny and the bits that are insightful, I do not recommend uh, the movie. Don't Look Up is a story of a couple of scientists who discover that an asteroid is within six months going to hit planet Earth and basically end all life on planet Earth. It is a kind of event that would destroy all life. We've seen movies about that in the past. Uh, One of my favorites is um, Armageddon with Bruce Willis. That was a fun movie. That was a lot of fun. I'm actually going to watch it now again just to get the, the taste of don't look up out of my system. Um, they immediately go to, of course, the, the, the president of the United States. The president of the United States uh, is a woman who is somewhat modeled after Trump. She has Trumpist uh, tendencies. Uh, I mean, the best, I think the best part of the movie is her expressing those Trump, Trumpist tendencies which sound a lot like Trump and COVID. Uh, basically, uh, y- you know, she downgrades this. Well, We'll have to think about it. We'll figure it out. Now, the U.S. has plans to deal with such, supposedly, in the movie. Send up nuclear weapons, blow up this thing, uh, uh, divert it, divert it away from Earth. There are plans. uh, But the president, you know, there's a midterm election. uh, You know, she doesn't want to hear about it. She's not interested. And even though there's one government scientist who is you know, engaged and really, really believes these scientists and agrees with them and wants to do something at the political level, at the top level, they're not interested. They don't care. Yeah, this will blow over. They've heard many scare stories in the past. Um, Then they go on TV, and and television is portrayed as it is, as, as this shallow, superficial, you know, one of the, they go on a morning talk show. And they tell the story of, you know, what's going to happen. And nobody takes them seriously. They all think they're a joke. They all think they're crazy. And uh, they're much more interested in the celebs. They're much more interested in the late who's selfied with who, or who breaks up with whom, or who's singing to whom. And there's no interest in, in the end of the world. No interest whatsoever. Then uh, the president gets into political trouble. Uh, in order to divert attention from the political trouble, she figures, okay, let's do this. And she has now, the, the two scientists are from Michigan State, which the politicians poo-poo because it's not an Ivy League school. She gets, um, she gets uh, 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 confirmation from Ivy League professors that this is the case. Ivy League professors you never see. I mean, one of the, well, anyway, we'll get to that. Uh, and now she's ready to do something. So they mount this whole program where they're going to send, uh, uh, you know, into space these nukes. They're going to deflect the uh, asteroid away from Earth. They launch at the last minute. This tech, um, this tech guru, this uh, tech entrepreneur, uh, convinces the president to abort the mission, which they do at the last minute. Uh, it turns out that this asteroid has. Lots of two hundred trillion dollars worth of rare earth materials on it, and what he wants to do is send up there these robots that are going to blow it up in a way, break it up so that these pieces fall to earth. That then the United States can collect them and be richer by two hundred trillion dollars. He's got Stanford professors and these professors who are vouching that this is legit. I don't think they chose Stanford by accident. And therefore, let's go for it. And of course, he's the biggest donor to the party of the president. So the president decides to go for it. The two scientists at the beginning know this is crazy. It's insane. We had a plan. We can deflect this. Now, for a little bit of money or or for a lot of money, you're going to put the entire human race at risk. I mean, this is a life-ending event, a world-ending event. But of course, it's actually, it doesn't sound that bizarre because 
once you start seeing the scenes, particularly with the politicians, you go, yeah, this could happen. So, uh, I mean, the high tech stuff is, the entrepreneur is BS. Anyway, um, uh, they fight this, the one scientist from kind of their inside, the other scientist becomes this advocate on the outside. She's ridiculed and nobody wants to believe them. And there's a whole movement that starts, you know. So at some point you can see the asteroid heading towards Earth. You can see it in the sky. And people look up, and, and one of the key things that the scientist said is, just look up. You can see it. You don't, you know, this is not, it's, it's there. It's heading towards us. It's going to kill us all. And a whole movement starts, and I, this is the best part of the whole movie. A whole movement starts called Don't Look Up, promoted by the president, saying, if you don't look, it's not there. Just don't look. They're just trying to scare you. They're just trying to, you know, manipulate you. So don't look up. Don't look at the statistics regarding vaccines. Don't look. It's better you don't know. That way you won't know what you're missing. You won't know that you're risking your lives by not taking them. Don't look at the stats. Don't look up. Bury your head in the sand. There was a great episode of, um, all right, you know the show anyway, an animated show that makes fun of everybody. Um, uh, about Islamic terrorism uh, uh, after 9-11. And um, in the show, the whole town decides that instead of confronting the threat of Islamic terrorism, they're going to bury their head in the sand. So they, they import a bunch of sand and they dig holes and they all bury their heads in the sand. And it was, it was perfect. This was, it was perfect. So um, what you get is... What you get is all these people not looking up. Anyway, I, you know, I won't spoil the ending for you, but Earth is eviscerated. At the end, the, the uh, high-tech guy's uh, uh, suggestion uh, uh, does not succeed, and all life is destroyed one way or the other. Um, that is the movie. And it's supposed to be an analogy, a metaphor for global warming. Now, I think it sounds more like COVID to me, just on a, on a different scale. Like, uh, you know, sh the president sounds like Trump, exactly like Trump. Uh, it's just going to go away. Don't look. Let's pretend there's no virus. If we just believe there's no virus, like a miracle, it will go away. He said this several times in February and then later in May or June, he said this. It'll just go away. Don't worry about it. Don't look. Don't think. Um... It was very good in capturing certain elements of popular culture that is unserious, doesn't care, is not interested in any truth or reality. It was very good at capturing the Trumpist blindness, the don't look up phenomena, the conspiracy theories. There are lots of conspiracy theories during the movie. So it was very good at capturing certain elements of American society that exists today that are sad. But it's way too negative on human beings. It's way too negative on mankind. We don't see any other scientist coming to the support these two scientists who are struggling to convince everybody, whereas every scientist in the world would do it. Almost every scientist in the world would do it because <laughs> Their life's at stake, and it's not really questionable. It's not even like COVID. This is a everybody dies kind of event, not with a probability. I think it was 99.6%. People are overwhelmingly stupid, almost everybody. The only nice guy who's not part of the inner circle of the two scientists is a religious nut who the scientist falls in love with. It's just... It's just a horrible movie. And of course, it's a way oversimplification of climate change. Only the very, very nutty, crazy, weird, marginalized scientists believe that climate change it is a catastrophe that's going to wipe out all human life on Earth. That's a marginal group, an insignificantly marginal group, marginalized group. Most scientists think that, yeah, you can have some flooding, you can have some warming, you can have some changes in climate, local and global, 
weather patterns will change, uh, agricultural patterns will have to change, ice caps will change, lots of things will change. But, and, and people might die and bad things will happen, but it's not the end of life on Earth. Only like Greta, and a dozen of her supporters think that. There's no 99.6% consensus around this is existential for the human race. It's not. It just isn't existential. Even if you believe that the climate is warming, it's just not existential. We can and will deal with much bigger issues. So, the movie is such a negative portrayal of the human race, of human beings. I have no problem portraying politicians as the scumbags that they really are, left and right, it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, of course, she, uh, the president was the only politician in her aid, were the only politicians portrayed, nobody else. There were no alternatives, just like there were no alternative scientists. Of course, the entrepreneur is, is portrayed in a ridiculous fashion superficial, shallow, stupid, willing to risk the entire evisceration of the human race to make a buck, rejects the idea that he's a businessman, because he's not a businessman, he's all these other things. It's just a, 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 a horrible, disgusting, ugly caricature of businessmen and, and, and Silicon Valley entrepreneurs. Silicon Valley entrepreneurs who are generally on the side of the filmmakers politically, and yet here are made out to be the most horrible people imaginable. How did they get so, how did they produce so much? How did they create so much if they're this horrible? There was not one positive, really, except the two scientists. There weren't any positive human beings in the, in the whole thing. The, the media people were horrible. The people in the streets were horrible. And, and, and you know, where are all the other scientists? Where are the responsible media people? Even if it's an alternative media, where are they? doesn't exist. So it just was way too negative. And while, again, a few scenes were funny, I don't think that funny. It was just a sad movie. Sad that people have this view of humanity. Sad that a movie like this with lots of movie stars, movie stars you'll recognize, movie stars that are big, Merrill Lynch playing the president, and a big, in the world of comedy, uh, that, that, that so many movie stars would be involved in such a, I, I think, a pretty bad movie. Just as a, as a movie. This is the movie Don't Look Up. Don't Look Up. Right. So um, I watched it because it seems like a cultural phenomena. I watched it because the left is going gaga over this. Uh, I, well, no, that's not true. I mean, actually, the reviews in the newspapers were almost all negative. I mean, nobody thinks this is a good movie. Nobody thinks it gets its points across. It just doesn't get it. Terrible sense of life, terrible explicit philosophy, terrible view of mankind, not that funny, creepily real in portraying, I think, what the Trump administration looked like and, in, to some extent, what any political administration looks like, the way they think or don't think, as the case may be. Uh, J.J. Jigspees asked me, do you feel the same about Dr. Strangelove? What's the difference between the two, the Strangelove succeed in satire We Don't Look Up fails? Yeah, I think Dr. Strangelove does succeed much better. I mean, Dr. Strangelove is, is, a, is, is, a, is a very well-made movie, I think, uh, partially because Peter Sellers is magnificent in it, playing, I don't know, 75 different roles. Uh, Dr. Strangelove is, is focused on just one issue, it, it, it's, it's, again, focused on a complete incompetence and, and pathetic nature of the political class. I think it's smarter. The dialogue is better. It doesn't make such a grandiose statement about the culture, the world, people out there, and everything else. Um, so I, I think it's less, in a sense, less ambitious. And look, I don't agree with the ideas in Dr. Strangelove. Dr. Strangelove has real flaws, its whole view of, I think, a certain moral equivalency between the United States and the Soviet Union, 
its view of uh, nuclear weapons as evil no matter what, um, I think are all wrong and, and disgraceful. And, you know, this is Stanley Kubrick. But it's a much better made film, much, much better made film. And I haven't seen it in decades, but I, I should watch it again now. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and, of course, subscribe Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.